I'm Sam Schulman, Professor of Medicine at McMaster University and Director of the, the Clinical Thromboembolism Program there, also a member of the ISTH Council. And I'll talk about my poster, Prothrombin Complex Concentrate for Major Bleeding on Factor 10A Inhibitors, which was a prospective cohort study. So today we have several anti a inhibitors for oral use, apixaban, rivaroxaban, doxaban, betrixaban, approved in different jurisdictions, but we don't have an antidote approved yet. And occasionally patients have major bleeding and physicians are at a loss what to do to remove the anticoagulant effect. So in, with that background, we designed a prospective cohort study that the initial plan was to aim for 35 patients and it was a multi-center study performed in Canada at hospitals where a local protocol had already allowed for prothrombin complex concentrate to be used for these patients even if that wasn't on label. It's anyhow used obviously for reversal of warfarin. We used the ISTH criteria to only include patients who had major bleeding. We gave a standardized dose of 2,000 units of prothrombin complex concentrate, which was according to the hospital protocol. And we had very few exclusion criteria, so only if uh, do not resuscitate orders had already been given, the patient would not be eligible. It had to be a bleeding, so just dropping hemoglobin was not acceptable. And uh, although an exclusion criterion was acute coronary syndrome or ischemic stroke during the past 30 days, we did not have any such patients screened. So the typical procedure was that the emergency physician or whoever uh, was in charge of the patient decided reversal was needed, got approval from transfusion medicine or thrombosis uh, physician on call to give the prothrombin complex concentrate and the following day study staff became involved, got consent to perform data collection and the 30-day follow-up. And then we use different models to evaluate the efficacy or effectiveness of the treatment. The time from onset of bleeding to the dose of prothrombin complex concentrate was 12 hours. We had about similar number of patients who had the bleeding associated with rivaroxaban as bleeding associated with apixaban. The indication for rivaroxaban or apixaban was in most patients, obviously atrial fibrillation, reflecting real world, and um, some patients had it for venous thromboembolism or other indications. So when we look at the results assessed by the responsible physician. So the physician who treated the patient and observed the patients the first several hours and they were provided with an assessment guide uh, which gave them the criteria for uh, deciding on poor, moderate or good for different types of bleeding. So we have the majority assessed as good effectiveness, some as moderate and uh, similar low number as uh, poor. We then went on to analyze the subset of patients where laboratory evidence had been collected. This was, as I want to remind you, in an emergency situation, there was no requirement to prove that there was a circulating anticoagulant effect, but in 16 patients out of the 35, there 
were results of elevated anti-TNA or elevated INR or prolonged prothrombin time. And in those, we have similar, almost more pronounced results towards good effect and moderate and uh, very few with poor effect. If we then go to the next graph, that shows that we wanted to compare our results with the results from the study on Andexanet Alpha. It's called Anexa 4. And we used uh, their way of assessing the CNS bleeds, also on the CNS bleeds in our cohort. And here you can see that uh, poor or none, we have similar low number as uh, they have and the rest now they call uh, the effectiveness either excellent or good while we only had the categories good or moderate but they are corresponding and that's just semantics that we did not feel like calling any effectiveness excellent because if you have a CNS bleed most patients, even if they stop bleeding, they have some neurological sequelae afterwards. So it's a little bit contraintuitive to call it excellent outcome. And the final assessment was according to a new definition that was published last year. That was after we started the study, so it wasn't in the protocol the ISTH recommendation for how to define effectiveness and that's binary not effective or effective and then we see again a predominance for effective versus not effective. So we concluded from this that um, PCC or prothrombin complex concentrate is a possibility to use for patients who have major bleeding and you can expect good outcome in the majority of patients. And from the safety point of view, we only had one event, a stroke, that uh, corresponds to 3%. So it is, there is no signal that this would be unsafe. And the uh, five deaths, they were from the intracranial hemorrhage because it was so large that uh, from the neurological consequences but not from thromboembolic components so it's not a death related to prothrombin complex concentrates so no signal that it's not safe to use prothrombin complex concentrate in these patients and thus we have something in our hands until an antidote becomes available, which might still take a few years. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you.